the Tigers. And this is the seat of the King of the Tigers himself. Hello, I'm Adam Pearson, Chairman of Hull City. Football third, this comes from my new club at Boothwood. Coming up in the next 45 minutes, Hull's Hell, the man who saved the Tigers from extinction. I'm buoyant and optimistic about the future and tend to put a football club back into this city that they can be proud of, that, that brings the credibility back into the city and uh, I'm determined to do that. Plus, double trouble. Two young strikers on Hull's past, their future and the big man, Mr Little. He's managed Villa and obviously other big clubs as well and it's just a great honour for a, big, for a club like Hull to have a manager like that. I think the fans know that, appreciate that. Um, you know, comes to a third division club and you just don't expect to work with someone as good as that, really. And all the action from all the games in Division 3. Topping up the table, Exeter and Carlisle went in search of their first wins of the season. And at the other end, could Rochdale keep their unbeaten record intact? A strange place to start the programme, I know, but bear with me. We're four miles west of Hull, near to a spectacular engineering feat that was completed in 1981 and matched only in the last five years. Got it yet? The Humber Bridge. It took eight years to build, using thousands of tons of steel in its construction. There's a distance of 1,410 metres between the two towers. And for more than a decade, it was the longest single-span suspension bridge in the world. Sorry if I bored you with the details, but I know some of you simply love statistics. In all seriousness, it is a fantastic site, though in a few years it won't be the only impressive local landmark. Times, they are a changing in Hull. So what is changing? Well, Hull has started to see sport as the key to its regeneration. It's a commonly quoted fact that it's the largest city in the country not to have top flight football, but it has always taken its sport very seriously. Number one, rugby league. This is the home of Hull Sharks. Number two, ice hockey, Hull Thunder. Number three, Speedway, Hull Vikings. Number four, more rugby league, home of Hull Kingston Rovers. And of course, football. This is the home of Hull City. But not for much longer. Hull City are going back to move forwards. They're relocating to a new stadium, ironically on the site of one of their former homes. It's all part of a massive regeneration project in the city that's headed by John North. The community stadium is one of several major regeneration projects which are taking the city forward into the 21st century. We're looking obviously for this stadium complex to move Hull into the Premier League in sports terms and we're hoping obviously that Hull City will follow the same path to the Premier League. Into the so the future for Hull City supporters certainly looking a lot brighter than it was just a year ago, back in the gloomy days when the club was floundering on the rocks, just a few days away from bankruptcy. Since then, a new owner has steadied the ship, and now their experienced manager can concentrate on football matters rather than financial worries. just challenge any person in, in any walk of life, in any, in any work environment, to go to work for three months and not get paid. You know, and if there's a job around the corner, they'd go and take the job around the corner. And, and to be honest, we went almost three months without pay, you know. So it is difficult to, to say to people, right, get in at nine o'clock in the morning because we're training in the morning. And I know you're not getting paid, but in the afternoon I want you to do a presentation at a local school. You know, and you're telling people what to do and, and yet not rewarding them properly for what they're doing. So. It was a very difficult period, and I think as the manager of the club, I mean, um, I felt that uh, it was important to me, for me to, to show the people, my players especially, so that I was willing to do it. And I think the fact that I was willing to do it made them say, well, fine, you know, I'll do it as well. It was a, it was a, a frightening thing at the time when it all uh, came to be, but I think the, if you look at our membership as an independent supporters organisation, we had 250 members before the, the trouble started, and then within two months we were up to nearly 1,600. And I mean, that was a quarter of the, the gate that was last year. That's a fantastic thing that, you know, that the fans did. Um, we had collections for the players because they wasn't getting paid at the time. I remember one night at about 10 o'clock, uh, my, my door 
the doorbell being knocked, I've gone to the door and there was a lady standing there with £5,000 in a bag, paper bag. She'd a member of the Supporters Association and they'd had a collection and they brought £5,000 to my house for me to give to the players. I mean, it's... So, you know, those sort of things tell you what it means to the, to the, the supporters of the club. They found their saviour in Adam Pearson, former director of Leeds, looking for a club to call his own. Hull fitted the bill. The club was in administration, therefore it had, it had got debts that it couldn't manage and it was actually trading, purportedly to trade insolvent and therefore it had to get an administration situation. So um, that makes the club very attractive. The money that, 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 that I put in in the first place was good money because it wasn't a lot and therefore we've got a chance here to actually turn this club around and make it an asset that's worth something. I mean all the creditors uh, lost their money apart from the inland revenue and the VAT who accepted uh, a payment in the pound and that is a sad thing but I have to put that behind because that was obviously the responsibility of the previous regime uh, and it was mismanaged and they have lost those creditors money. Uh, all I can say is that the club is now being run professionally and on strict commercial guidelines with the proper infrastructure in place uh, and it's cash rich and therefore it should not happen again. I think Adam's professionalism was, was something that gave me the belief that the club would be sorted out and um, and I passed that on to the players on a daily basis. Not that I said who it was or where they were from, but I encouraged them to get their heads down work because I genuinely felt that the club would be saved. The team last year um, really went far beyond everybody's expectations. Um, nobody thought we really would end up in the playoffs as we did. Um, having said that, the, the, the fans themselves and the cooperative voted for their sort of man of the year. And Brian, hands down, got that vote. I mean, he was the single person that kept everything together. Um, and I think that was a, a recognition of his efforts. No one needs to tell me what the supporters of Hull City think of the club. They love it to bits. They, they did everything they possibly could to help the players through a very difficult period. And uh, it would be nice to think that, you know, that sort of response from them, we could respond to them in return by giving them a team that can, can get promotion. You seem tigerish about the future. Yes, I'm a buoyant and optimistic about the future. I intend to put a football club back into the city and be proud of that, that brings the credibility back into the city and uh, I'm determined to do that. I need a little time to think it over I need a little space just on my own I need a little time Amazing how quickly things turn around in football. And of course, so far this season, Brian Little Cull are unbeaten. We'll be bringing you extended highlights of their game against York a little bit later. But first, let's catch up with some other Division 3 action. Gary Alexander, who between them have scored four of Hull's goals so far this season. Moving up market from fish docks to marina, a more appropriate place to talk to the two young strikers already repaying the £400,000 Hull's invested in them. So we're both off the mark now. Um, we work out in training. Hopefully, plan something to get there. But there's a, bit, a whole lot of new players at Hull, aren't there? There's what, 14 new players? There's 14 new players. It's always good to have like, quite a big squad because it keeps you on your toes. You know, if you're not playing well, then you're not going to be playing. So it does keep you on your toes, and you've got to be performing week in, week out to stay on the side. And what about your manager? Then? Oh, without doubt, he must be, you know, the best manager outside the Premier League. He's, uh, He's managed Villa and obviously other big clubs as well and it's just a great honour for I think for the club like Hull to have a manager like that. I think the fans know that and appreciate that. Um, you know, you come to a third division club and you just don't expect to work with someone who does that really. He doesn't treat us no difference to some of the coaches I've been managed under and all that, but he's obviously is well respected because he's, he's managed the, like Villa in the top flight. He's had some of the best players in the world he's worked with and he's come here and treats us no difference to probably what he's treated them. Little's new look team started the season with a win, Laurie Dudfield scoring. He played his football at Chesterfield and briefly in the Premiership. Uh, Everton at home, came off uh, the of Tony Cotty, had my boy here and that, um, and then made my second appearance against Villa, and then uh, at the end, towards the end of the season, and then uh, Peter Taylor came in, but obviously, you know, he's got his own players, ideas and that, brought in a lot of strikers and just push me further down the second order. And so that really was why you wanted to get away from Leicester and, and come here, because it is dropping quite a few divisions. It is, yeah, it is dropping, but it's, it's a great chance for the first team football. Um, 
you know, it's obviously, you know, it's a lot of money for to spend for the television club. But I'm thankful that, you know, they're taking a chance on me to do that. A good start helped by Alexander's three goals and newly found financial security makes Hull a far different beast from the troubled club of last season. Obviously it was a lot, it was all in the papers, it was on the chat and you sit on the telly and you think, well, that club could be going under at any time. So you never ever think we're going to be ending up here the following season and the money they've spent. The club just come out of just come out of nowhere. Adam Pearson's done a great job and got the club back on its feet. Hopefully they're going to start going places. You helped Chesterfield to get promoted to the second division last season. Do you think you'll be able to do the same for Hull? Uh, I hope so, yeah. It'd be nice to see us on the top, but we'll have to wait and see. But I'm confident, I think we're both confident we'll be up there. For both players, that, Hull's final standing in the league, is the benchmark of success. But though, of course, Division 3 is the league that counts, on Football Third, we offer the alternative league, the Speed League. Well, as the season goes on, we've been building up the details of our Speed League, finding out who's the fastest runners and the hottest shot in the third division. Now, here we have Hull's sprinters. Let's find out who they are. Could I have your name and finish? Ben Morley, fullback. Michael Price, fullback. Matthew Broomer, centre half, centre forward. David Ferris, Broomer. Let's see how they get on. One, two, three, go! And our short-haired winger, David Beresford, takes the spoils. As we can see, Macclesfield's George Abbey still remains in top spot, just ahead of Hull's David Beresford, with 4.8 seconds. We seem to have quite a lot of shot-takers here at Hull. Let's meet them. Number one, in your ID number one. Paul Mosselwhite. Gary Alexander, forward. Matthew Lennon, goalkeeper. OK, let's make a start. <laughs> in third place, with 64 miles an hour, Nicky Mohan. Second spot goes to goalkeeper Max Glennon, with 67. But the winner with 69 miles per hour is striker Gary Alexander. So Gary's 69 takes him joint second with Macclesfield's David Riddler. But lighting the way is striker Kyle Lightbourne, who's got 73. Gary Alexander seems to have taken over the programme. We'll be finding out later on if he can run the match as well. But before that, some more action from Division 3. Supporters remember him well. He got us relegated, didn't he? Hey, he'll get a good reception when he come out today, won't he? He was a fantastic manager when he was here. He did so much for the club. His yeah. tactics were superb. His, his buying and selling of players was absolutely fantastic. Um, does that count? <laughs> well, I've been following Old City for um, 20 years now. And uh, during the final season of his reign, I stopped coming and started playing football on a Saturday. That's how bad it got. <laughs> I think a problem with it. Um, he wasn't a very good manager, but um, that's all history now, and, and just looking forward to the future, not not the past. Especially the last two years, it was even at home, five men behind the ball, long ball, football. I mean, was relegated twice. Nobody had any faith in him, along with the chairman at the time. Just they just wouldn't budge. They had no ambition. The football was dull. But what kind of reception will you give him today? Oh, not. Not an unfriendly one. Old City supporters aren't like that. <laughs> but Brian Little's now in charge as Old City take on York City. Or the Minster Man leaves smiling. But long towards Dudfield. Loses out to Potter. Alexander now. Well, he didn't really get hold of the shot, but Brian Little can be pleased with the way that Alexander is settling in. Great turn by Rowe to get away from fielding. Alexander offering good support. Hold continue to control things. Basher close to Alexander. Here's Johnson. Edmondson in the way there. Now Philpott. Oh, and he was caught there by Brass. Brass diving in. Philpott with the free kick. And Moyne has scored. Hull ahead up to 23 minutes. The first Mickey Moyne has scored since returning to Hull from Stoke City. A bit cruel on York that though. Potter. Now Bullock. Oh, what a strike that was. 
Good effort by Bullock. Excellent save by Matthew Glennon. Edmondson. Now Nogan. Edmondson again. This is better from York. Here's Cooper. Second chance for Cooper. Bullock with a header. Phil Potts clearance. And Richardson. Another fingertip save by Glennon. This time from Nick Richardson. One by Rowe. Here's Beresford. Basham across to cover. Janssen arriving with Alexander. Another good opportunity for Hull City. Whitmore. Now Dudfield is really industrious. Whitmore again. Terrific run by the substitute. And that's a penalty. Whitmore brought down by Edmondson. York are furious. They think that Edmondson got the ball, but I suspect that the referee has given the penalty because Edmondson was holding. There wasn't a trip. Dudfield against Pettis. And that's 2 0. Dudfield's second goal since joining Hull. Well struck. Pettis committed and committed the wrong way. Grass. Closely watched by Whittle. Here's Potter. York can't afford to be cautious now. And no good. Another good save by Glennon. Accurate cross by Proctor. No good off balance, but he did well. Basham and Proctor inside the six-yard area. Here's Fielding. And again, Glennon has to react smartly. Dudfield looks strong. Basham trying to hold him up. Whitmore offering good support. Here's Alexander. That's Hull third. And his fourth of the season. Great play as well by Dudfield. Full of confidence. He might have gone through and tried to... But he saw that Alexander was better placed. Brass. Nogan. Now operating out wide. Stamp. Oh, brilliant save by Glennon. Instinctive attempt by Neville Stamp. Glennon on his knees, but it's been a hectic afternoon. Lee. Now Petty. Oh, back up the post. And Whitmore over the top. How did he miss that? Four in the wall. Whitmore, Holt and Lee over the free kick. It's Lee. Magnificent strike. Beautiful free kick. Nothing that Fetis could do about that. Over the defensive wall. Dudfield chasing back. Says much about the commitment shown by Hull. And they've been rewarded for that commitment. Another home win. They're on a bit of a roll now. We just have to keep everybody's feet on the ground, don't we? And it's a very common football saying. But it is true. But, you know, the, the problems we're going to have is, you know, we've now lost another player today through injury. Um, so that's going to be several weeks. Uh, but, you know, we've got a decent group. We've got a good chance. Um, but lots of things will happen from now till the end of the season. You know, we might lose a game or two, and then everybody will be tested with their mentality then. Well, Terry, it wasn't the happiest return to Hull today. No, not as happy as last year. We came back last year and picked up a point, but today we didn't deserve anything. And the bottom line was we didn't play well enough, particularly in the second half. In the programme, we've got a feature on two strikers, Laurie and, and yeah. Gary. And it's nice to see that they do seem to have gelled so very quickly together.
Well, I think it's been good for us. You know, we've, we brought in two young lads, lads, which is always a bit of a gamble, but, you know, from day one when they've come here, you know, they've, they've been at the hotel together, they've looked around the town together, they've trained together, often they do their shooting together. They seem to be everywhere together. And, and, and you know, when you talk to strikers, you more often than not talk to striking partnerships. So we ought to keep track of you two as a striking partnership. What's it going to be at the end of the season? What, 20 each? What do you reckon? It'd be nice. <laughs> You'd like to think so, but it doesn't matter. And the day, as long as we keep winning and one of them scoring and we're playing well together. I'll go on it, must. There must be a bit of personal <laughs> pride in there. Come on, lads. <laughs> a bit of banter, that's it. <laughs>